Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 10 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 10 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, let's hop in. Uh, this video will be spe specifically focused on memory. So uh, we'll just go into the uh, specs to start. Uh, we'll go over some of the, uh, the compatibilities. Uh, we'll go over the max speeds and sizes, which depends on your processor. And then we'll actually show you how to physically install them. So uh, how many DIMM slots are there? There are 24 DIMM slots inside. It takes DDR4 memory. It takes a number of different speeds and this is where it gets a little bit complicated you can go as low as 2133 2400 2666 2933 or 3200 but that's where it gets a little complicated with a first gen scalable proc you cannot put in a 2933 or a 3200 speed module uh, it just won't function it's not even like it'll clock down it just won't even function it won't register uh, so you need to make sure for a first gen scalable proc you are only putting in 2666 or less and depending on what proc you have in it might only even support up to 2400 speed and then when you start filling up all the uh the dims in the channel it can even potentially clock down further so uh, i recommend going to the hpe quick specs that we have on our website uh, when you go into the uh, quick tech specs on uh, one of the tabs that we have on our server configurator it'll show you um, a link to get to the quick spec and that'll uh, have a very detailed breakdown of the ram speeds versus the CPU that you have inside, and that's what I recommend. Now, if you do have a second gen scalable proc, you can use 2933 and you can use 3200, but do note the 3200 will not actually function at 3200, it will clock down to 2933, which will be the true fastest speed that you can get with this gen 10 box is 2933. And again, you have to have a second gen scalable proc in order to do that. So that was a lot to say just about speed. So uh, now the types of sizes you can use, you can go as low as a four gig, an eight gig, a 16 gig, a 32 gig, a 64 gig, or all the way up to 128 gig, but that brings us to what type of RAM is actually compatible. Well, we have ECC registered known as an RDIM, and we have load reduced known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you can get is 1.5 terabytes using 2464 gigs at 2933 speed. Whereas with load reduced, you can get three terabytes using 2428 gigabytes at 2933 speed. Again, must have a second gen scalable to that 2933 speed. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the speeds, the sizes, what's compatible, let's show you how to actually install them, which is a little bit more complicated than it should be. Thank you, HPE, for that. And we'll show you why. And, uh, but before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We are safe to work inside our machine. All we're gonna need our memory modules, no tools needed. So make sure your latch is set to unlock remove the lid we're going to remove the air baffle which we showed you at the start of the series in the cpu video you just push over here and you can pop this out and then you just push over here and it'll pop out over here as well uh, and then lift it straight up now you do not have to at uh, do this on your side but i am going to remove the fans just so that you guys have a better view of uh, this upgrade as a whole so let's go ahead and remove our fan bank and hopefully that makes a better view for you guys so uh, as we had uh, discussed a little bit in the cpu video this is cpu one this is cpu two there are 24 dims inside 12 dims on cpu one 12 dims on cpu two um, if you notice they go white black white black white black that is the difference in the memory channels which means there's two dims Per memory channel and six memory channels per processor uh, so that's kind of your general layout so um, the other thing actually I wanted to point out is uh, if if you're at home what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do uh, six dim and 12 dim configuration and all the way but uh, right here uh, HPE has a memory population guide, and this will show you how to, or which DIMM slots to put them in if you're putting in uh, less than what we're gonna show you here. But uh, for what we're doing, we're gonna show you six and 12, and then 24. Um, and it also shows right here, 
Uh, it has the uh, CPU one, CPU two, just has everything labeled, your channels, your dim slots. Uh, so that is a helpful guide that they do have. And then technically, it's very, very difficult to see, but uh, HP does have everything labeled in between the dim slots. Uh, the 380 is a little bit better than the 360 Gen 10 as far as just making it a little bit clearer to see, uh, but it is a, a little bit difficult as a whole. So I closed all the tabs real quick to make it a little bit easier to see uh, which tabs are the start. So uh, again, white is the start of the channel and black is the second dim slot in the channel. So we're gonna hit all of our white dim slots first before uh, we do any of the black dim slots. And the reason being is we wanna maximize overall performance. You don't wanna overload one channel and have it doing all the work and then have other channels not doing any work. So just having a nice even distribution across your channels is the name of the game here. So, all right, the first slot we're gonna put in is B1 then D3, and then F5. Now we're gonna swing over here and we're gonna go to E8, C10, A12. Bingo. All right, so now we're gonna come over here to CPU2. And uh, CPU2, it's going to be uh, the same thing, uh, B1, D3, F5, Swing around, E8, C, 10, A, 12. So uh, the first six were the six over here, and then the next six were the six whites over here, okay? Um, and that'll get you your first 12. And then, of course, if you're filling it up, you start uh, putting them in all, to, all the black dim slots, uh, but that is the proper way to do your configuration. So now I wanna show you a couple other things. So um, first things first, there is a notch on your leads. So this notch right here, um, sort of in the middle, is not perfectly centered. This notch is known as a key. The key is important because this is a common user error where someone will not line the dim up properly. You have to have it facing the right way because there's a little plastic piece that sticks up in the middle of the dim slot. Uh, so if you try to uh, jam it in the wrong way, you could break the leads or you could damage the dim slot, which means you might need a new motherboard, which would be the last thing you'd want to have happen. So that's something I always point out to be just very safe to make sure you have it faced the right way. So the next thing I always like to do too is I like to pop open all of my tabs uh, before I get started. I closed them just to show you guys the channels, but I like to have them all wide open before I install modules. It uh, just makes it a little bit easier for me uh, while I'm going to just uh, have it all wide open. So I'm just going to pop all these open. And all right, now we're going to come back over here to B1. And we're going to put it in and just click, click you here. It's one of the things I always like to point out is that click, click. Um, if you're not fully seating your module, and I'll, I'll show it right here. So this module is in there, but it's not fully in there. And you can see how this tab is, is further up. It hooks to the side of the module. That click you here is it hooking in and then pulling it firmly into the dim slot so that you have a nice, uh, good connection. So that's always one of the things I like to point out because uh, we'll have people tell us that they have a bad memory module and we tell them to rotate it around. And the reason being is that uh, like the dim could literally be like right there. It's really hard to tell that one compared to this one, but this is not in there. That would make the dim not register. And sometimes it'll even, if you have this whole thing loaded up, it'll even throw the, the next dim slot in the channel out telling you have two bad modules. And so it's something we always tell people when you're trying to figure out if you have a bad dim or not, just rotate your modules around, uh, see if the error follows the dim, if it follows the dim slot, uh, or maybe it was just, like I said, not properly seated, which is a very, very common user error. So uh, just some uh, some tricks to, uh, to try out. So, all right, so we're gonna put them in the first six white slots. And then now we're gonna put them in the next six white slots over here. And this will be the last one to get us to 12. So this would again be the configuration for 12 using all the white dim slots. So you have a nice even distribution across all of your memory channels, no channels overloaded. Uh, all channels have a nice even balance. So now we'll do 24 dims. All right, so this is the last module and we have 
installed 24, 32 gigs. So this will be a nice uh, upgrade overall for this box. Um, and in real time, this is honestly a pretty fast upgrade. It's a very simple one. Uh, videos like this make it easy to let you know just what slots to put it in if you're not maxing it out. And if you do need any memory kits, we'd love the opportunity to quote you. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. We also custom build servers, HPE, Dell, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, new and used. And we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. If you made it this far, guys, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. Take care. Take it easy.